Um, can you hear my voice at the back? No. Hello? Okay. Hey. Um, okay. Uh, good evening, guys. Guys and gals. So, uh, my talk is uh, regarding uh, web components that works everywhere. So, uh, I assume as um, most or majority of here are front end developers. And um, these front end developers are working for several uh, tools and JavaScripts like uh, React, Angular, or Vue. And then some of us is working on um, Calendar, uh, like to example Calendar. So uh, we can create Calendar for React, and then we can create a Calendar for uh, Angular and Vue.js. Um, and then uh, when I tried to search uh, date picker uh, in NPM, uh, I found 1,532 packages. So there are um, packages for React, there are packages for Vue.js, and packages for anything. So uh, what if, uh, what if uh, our date picker is the same functionality with the input and button? So we can place this in our um, React. We can place this or reuse into Vue.js. And then everyone is happy, right? So uh, by the way, I'm RJ. Uh, my name is RJ. You can call me J. And then I'm front-end developer um, working in a bank. And then I have an open source project also, a lead custom element. I'm currently starting it. And then I have create custom elements. So most of uh, open source are working on the web components. So what is web components? Um, I can uh, I highlight is so it can be used with any JavaScript library or framework that works with HTML. So if you're working with CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, uh, web components is there. So uh, basically, it's um, uh, standard for our um, browser. So uh, there are four specifications for web components. So this is founded by W3C or the Web Components Org. So uh, these icons or images, uh, first is custom elements, and then this, the first, uh, the second one is shadow DOM, uh, the third one is HTML templates, and the last one is the new one is ES, ES modules. So uh, I can, um, since I have uh, uh, 20 minutes, I can tackle or uh, discuss two, which is the most important, which is uh, custom elements in Shadow DOM. So uh, I, will, I will talk first the uh, custom elements. What is custom elements? Custom elements is provides a way uh, to the authors to build their own um, cost, uh, elements or DOM elements. So it's just like uh, input or button you can create on your own elements like uh, RJ dash element, something like that. And then it can do or it can render uh, a button with the color of blue, something like that. So uh, the, on how you create your custom elements, this is the way how you create. So uh, HTML elements is just uh, the base class HTML element is just uh, native to the browser. So you can find it in Firefox, Chrome, Safari, or even though the Opera. So just create a class and then extend it to HTML element, and then you can create uh, you can create a constructor and then have a um, uh, property. The next one is we can create our own render. So we can do this. Uh, this that in our HTML and then we can do hello uh, this name. Like that. And then next one is we can um, custom elements or uh, native custom elements has their own uh, life cycle also. So when the DOM or element is append to the DOM uh, the connected callback will be the one to uh, execute. So uh, that's the time uh, uh, it will uh, execute this render method. So for example, I will create my uh, custom element as hello name. And then uh, it will append to the body. It will call or uh, also uh, it will call the connected callback. Um, 
we can also have uh, um, since um, custom elements has a features also that you can create your own properties. So you know this value um, um, name you can create this. So by doing this, you can static get observe attributes. So by the way, this is a standard. Uh, you can find it in uh, web comp uh, components org. And then uh, every time the property will change, it will um, have attribute callback change. So it will execute this. So the same thing with the app. There's a life cycle also in the view. Also, there's a life cycle. So um, getter and setter. So since we are doing a ES6 um, class base. Um, custom elements has the features of getter setter. So um, you can do this like, uh, um, for example, you can query by selector and then set the property. We can do that. So this is the way how you can um, declare it. And after that, um, um, I just slightly um, modify our code, something like in connected callback. So I just uh, find all the, the properties or uh, yeah, the property attributes, and then set if we have this uh, um, initial value. So for example, hello name, and then I have name, hello Jane, something like that. So I will um, set that. And then this is how you declare your custom elements. So custom elements that define, and then hello name, and you can pass the uh, function or the class, something like that. And then this is how you uh, put in your HTML. So there's hello name. Uh, this is the property or attributes that, that we have. And then it goes to Jane. And then this is the one uh, ad additional markup. And then this is how does the, uh, your custom elements render. So it says that hello and then the name uh, Jane. Web components everywhere. So uh, uh, as I see, uh, there's a property also, right? So you can do this also. Document query selector, hello name. You can set also something like that. So it will change. It will trigger the attribute uh, change callback, and then it will render. OK, um, that's a pretty short uh, definition of on how to create a custom elements. Next one is a shadow dog. So this is another um, uh, important or the most important uh, specification of the um, web components. So what is Shadow DOM? So Shadow DOM is, defines how to use encapsulate style and markup in your web components. Um, you have, uh, have you tried notice that uh, if you create your own um, uh, component and then you have a bootstrap CSS, right? And then that bootstrap CSS uh, can override your styles. So you have noticed that uh, it will change the color or, or it will change the spacing and padding. So the shadow DOM will trap or will prevent this, um, um, uh, will prevent this uh, doing the changing of your styles and elements. So how you do that? So uh, custom elements you can do uh, in the constructor these that attach shadow, and then you can do open. And then we can change slightly on our code that uh, since there's a shadow, uh, we can do this the shadow root, and then uh, have this element and tags. So th this is how you uh, how does our custom elements render. So you notice that uh, there's a shadow root. So it will um, prevent or guard of uh, your element inside the shadow root. So we can change um, we can change slightly our, our code. So in the head, I will have uh, uh, find all the p or paragraph and change the color of the red. So you notice that um, only the um, this. Um, web components works everywhere is the um, change the color. So it doesn't affect inside the shadow root. So it says that no, uh, I will not allow to change any of our, my elements inside the shadow root. So uh, 
this is also uh, one of the uh, good features of the um, custom elements or the web components. So we can do also add styles to our uh, custom um, elements. So uh, I put style and then I will uh, color all the paragraphs inside my shadow root and then uh, make it a blue. So you notice that uh, only my custom element changed the color. So it doesn't change outside the my custom elements. Uh, it doesn't change the color uh, outside my custom elements. So um, as I said, that um, custom element guard you of uh, modifying any styles and DOM manipulation inside your shadow root. So uh, I see that uh, document the query selector. I will query all the P or paragraph, it returns only one. So uh, meaning that uh, it cannot find any um, paragraph or any other paragraph uh, inside my shadow root. So uh, to summarize, this is our source, uh, source code uh, to have uh, a shadow root. So first constructor, render, and then I have a connected callback, and I got her. So uh, it, uh, this is a native to the browser. So you don't need to uh, uh, use any other frameworks for this to create your own custom elements. So um, by doing that, uh, why should I care? Right? So um, um, why should I use this? Because uh, I use uh, React, I use Vue.js, I use Angular. It's really cool, right? So um, in some other enterprise company, like uh, I work in a bank, so we have a lot of teams and a lot of projects. So some uh, team A are using React, team B is using Angular. Because uh, team A and team B are productive to this framework. Right, so um, one of the um, uh, advantage of this is brand consistency. So uh, consisting uh, consistency of your uh, branding because uh, in our enterprise um, company they have their branding colors, fonts. You need to follow all of these things. So um, uh, with this um, web components, you can create your one web components, custom elements, and reuse to, to other frameworks. And then business perspective, uh, it can save money, right? So you don't need to repeat or create, like for example, what I said is calendar. You need to repeat it, you need to create in Angular, you need to create in React, you need to create in Vue. So why not create one calendar or one date picker and reuse it? And then developer experience. The code will be more consumable. Code can be shared between teams more easily. So if one team uh, is using date picker, they can reuse this also in their um, uh, project also. So they don't need to rewrite it. So the next one is, can we even use these things? The answer is, Yes, because uh, most of our um, uh, modern browser are supported custom elements. So um, rather than the, the edge. So uh, IE is not, uh, it's dead now. So, so don't do that. OK, anyway, um, HTML elements, custom elements, shadow DOM, and ES modules um, all are uh, supported uh, in in Safari, in Firefox, recently Firefox supported. Uh, in Edge, um, they use Polyfill to, to run your custom elements, but uh, I think recently they announced that they're using Chromium. So Chromium is based on Chrome. So since Chrome is supported custom elements, so it could be uh, usable. So um, my last part is demo. So uh, I have created four um, uh, demos uh, using Angular, React, Vue.js, and then native uh, Vanilla.js. 
So um, I, uh, I create input element and reuse this to um, various uh, framework. So um, you know the color, right? Red is angular. So blue is React. And then I have green. Green is Vue.js. And the black one is native one. So um, for this, uh, I have uh, the, the input element is a custom elements. And then the card itself is um, they build on their own uh, library or framework. So you can see that it's almost the same, right? So you can reuse this. I just create a script tag and then uh, put a source of my custom elements and then I can reuse it. So it's the same thing. I can search. And then also in Vue.js, I can search also. So uh, this is uh, created in the, um, I have, uh, I already placed the, the URL so that you can take a look if you want. So uh, I use code sandbox to, to, to do the coding and then uh, I stack leads to have the coding for the uh, custom elements. So I think that's all. Sorry. Uh, you showed us the list with the, all the desktop browsers. How is that with the, with the mobile browsers? Do the, the custom element work there already? Um, in my experience, uh, it's uh, uh, Chrome. I, I, I tried. So um, I'm not sure of other, so maybe I can test if, uh, when I get that. Yeah, um, so you demoed different frameworks, yep. which I think is, uh, and, and you also mentioned that different teams use different frameworks already. Yep. So like, which paths do you see going down? Do you see uh, frameworks providing the capability to compile or transpile their component, you know, things into web components? Or do you see it going the other way around where people will write web components and then they'll have a React wrapper for it or you know, an Angular wrapper for it? Uh, for me, uh, you can do both. Because uh, if you're productive with, uh, for example, uh, there's uh, Angular elements. So you can create your um, um, web components into Angular and then convert it. And then you can do that in Vue.js also. You can create um, what you call that a web components in Vue.js. Um, the only thing is there is an uh, additional um, bundle that you can integrate it. So while the uh, native one is just, uh, or uh, the browser already provided it to you. So um, why not uh, use the browser, provide, uh, browser API that you, or, uh, they provided it to you? So uh, for me, um, because in our pre my previous employer, uh, we use Angular elements also. And then later on, we decided that uh, what if we can convert these Angular elements to the web components. So uh, we converted half of our um, Angular elements to native one. And then uh, the bundle is um, almost half. The, the bundle is almost half the size. So since we're doing... Um, I don't know, uh, because uh, the bundle size is matters to us because we're using um, some, other, um, some other places or like 2G or something like that. They're using 3G only a network. So bundle size matters. So um, back to your question, um, some other teams or some other company uh, favor using Vue.js to, for example, uh, convert to, uh, to shared their um, components to other teams. So if you, you're not planning to share it, we're just, just in your uh, team, uh, why, why you convert to web components, right? Uh, at least web components uh, be used in React Native. Okay, so um, 
the last uh, I know is uh, stencil JS. Uh, um, I haven't. Heard, uh, it's just for the hybrid only. So I'm not sure for the for the React Native. So because React Native is just another layer for 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 the hybrid. So uh, I'm not sure for that. I haven't tried. Do you have any like any example for event handling? Yeah, uh, we have still have time. Right? Um, for the for the web components, right? Recursion. So um, this is uh, me and my colleague uh, create some like custom element TS. So we just uh, uh, have uh, something like a uh, sort behind the scenes, we uh, create a decorator uh, to make the developer easy to, to use. So we have this, um, what you call that? I have input, right? So input. So I have this dispatch, and then um, dispatch mean uh, in web components is just uh, exposing uh, exposing uh, events to to the the developers. So for example, like for example, this is ar change. I will expose this event to the developers. So when they uh, listen to this uh, uh, event, um, it will trigger. So I have uh, created also, um, we will created a listen. So meaning uh, it will listen to any event. So you can see that uh, we listen to the key app and then um, the other parameter is just like um, um, the, the, the input or the input field that you want. So but uh, in native, uh, it's just a simple this that uh, add event listener. And then for the for the native for dispatching it uh, to create an event is this that dispatch, so we just uh, we just convert this to to more presentable and then easy to use. So we have this dispatch decorator, and then we have a prop. So meaning it's uh, a prop is just like a two-way binding. Uh, when you change when you change this property. It will uh, watch. Uh, watch and prop will be combination. So prop is just like when you change this, the property that you need to expose, property and attribute that you need to expose to the developer. When you change this, you need to uh, implement a watch. Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry for that. I didn't see right. Okay. Uh, a few more times, please. <laughs> okay. So uh, I have a prop, right? Prop is just the one you need to expose to the developer. So if this will change, uh, you need to uh, trigger uh, watch. 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 Just is just watching your. Uh, attribute and property. So as you can see that when the value uh, change, I will um, execute this. Uh, one last question. <coughs> uh, if we have uh, like a net set component, uh, how can we pass the, uh, pass the data from upper layer component to the lower layer component? Uh, you can use um, dispatch or you can use an event. So in a native event, uh, there is a bubble. You can set to bubble to true, and then there's a compose to set to true to make it up. So uh, it's just like uh, 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 RxJS that you need to, to bubble up. So you can need to dispatch it. You can pass all true attribute also. So you can pass it through attribute, or you can pass by event. Event is a global, so you can dispatch it. So we and then listen. So if your child is listening, it uh, it will uh, uh, it will receive your uh, data. Uh, like I have said, that you mean that we, we listen to the like uh, from 
Yep. Thank you. Damn.